Story 1. Conservative Christian College. A group of us played Age of Empires one weekend. They didn't like it and called a meeting. Everyone involved got misdemeanors on their records. There was nothing in the handbook about it being against the rules, though. The only person that didn't get any punishment was the son of the president, even though he was just as involved as the rest of us. Was quite interesting explaining the write-up on my record when I transferred. You got a misdemeanor for what? Story 2. In elementary, they banned running entirely. No running on the playground either. They also banned all ball sports and would take your ball if you took it from home, and they would put it in the gym cupboard to be used during PE class. Keep in mind that these were 4 to 11-year-olds, so everyone ignored the rules, and so many were in detention. I'm not sure what we called it, that they had to drop the rule and nothing came of it. But the second rule about ball sports? Well, it turned out that one of the kids in the year below me had brought in a signed soccer ball by a really famous player, and the school took it and kept it. We found out because there was a very angry mother screaming at the secretary that they effectively stole something that could be worth upwards of $1,000. They obviously gave the ball back and stopped stealing them after that. Who would have thought that stealing from little kids was a bad idea? Story 3. School added thumbprint scanners at the gates of school, which counted as registration. Needless to say, I would just walk to the school, scan my thumb, and walk back home with them none the wiser. It was a great few months, until they noticed. Story 4. In my freshman year of high school, we had a terrible vandalism problem. The bathrooms would be broken in various ways almost constantly. In a stroke of pure genius, the staff decided that any bathroom that was vandalized would be closed for the week on first offense, the quarter for second, and permanently on the third offense. They took back the rule after closing every bathroom on day one. Story 5. Locked bathroom doors in the period after lunch. You should have gone at lunch. Also banned duct tape accessories back when that was a trend. They said it was gang activity. Story 6. We weren't allowed to play tag football at lunch, only frisbee. When I asked the principal what the difference was, he responded with a sarcastic tone, a football is round and a frisbee is a flat disc. He left the school later that year, went to another school, and a few years later was brought up on charges for failing to report the abuse of a student by a teacher. Story 7. My high school mascot was Daniel Boone holding a musket. A kid wore a Guns N' Roses shirt to school and was told he had to change shirts because of the pistols on the shirts. He pointed out the hypocrisy of the school mascots, and they changed everything. The mascot was switched to holding a flagpole instead. Every instance of the mascot was changed, from the multiple signs outside and around the school to the giant picture in the middle of our basketball stadium. Holden, you are a legend for this. Story 8. If you were involved in a fight, you got suspended. While it sounds reasonable, context did not matter. I got suspended once, not for throwing a single punch, kick, or whatever. I got suspended because someone knocked the books out of my hand, and when I reached down to grab them, they punched me in the face. I got suspended for walking down the hallway and unprovoked getting punched in the face. Screw Brandon Valley Middle School. My buddy actually got suspended for something similar. His Marine Corps MP mother told him in no uncertain terms that if anyone tried that crap again, earn that suspension. Surprise, surprise, the dude tried that again, and he went ham on that kid. Busted nose, torn ear, black and blue for weeks. The fallout was exactly the same as not fighting back at all, except my buddy got a pat on the back from his mom and a new video game. Tell you what, no one tried that with him again. If it wasn't zero tolerance, then it wouldn't be a problem. Someone gives you some physical trouble and they get punished, easy peasy. They've got cameras everywhere. Surely it would be pretty easy to see. Story 9. We were all given these ugly planners at the beginning of the school year, with a few pages at the back filled with hall passes. If you didn't have your planner, or if all your boxes were filled, you weren't allowed to go to the bathroom. And no, you couldn't buy a new planner, or borrow one from your friend. The only excuse you had was if you had a doctor's note, but no doctor is going to give a note for an upset stomach caused by the school lunch. Oh wow. I totally forgot about this until you said this. We had those too. Some teachers give extra credit to kids who never used any of their hall passes. I went to a school that had block scheduling, so our classes were two hours long. Pretty messed up that we were incentivized to never use the bathroom now that I look back on it. Story 10. 
My high school band t-shirts that had the cover of Rush's album Signals, an album popular at the time, which features an image of a dog sniffing a fire hydrant. They considered it scatological because the dog was about to pee on it. This struck the entire student body as extremely stupid, and roughly half of the student body picked a day to wear the t-shirt. We won. Story 11. A girl and a boy couldn't sit together. The school employed disciplinarians to roam around the school and monitor this activity. If found, you will get a reprimand. If found repeating the offense, you get sent to the principal's office. And if continuing, then eventually escalate to the parents. Story 12. They banned hats because hats can be used to signify gang colors. The only major crime group in our area was the Hells Angels, and they certainly weren't having people wear hats for children to signify their allegiance. It was so bad a few years after I graduated. I came back to volunteer as a chaperone for a school trip as a favor for my favorite teacher. The principal saw me wearing a beanie from across the school. He literally sprinted half a mile to chase me down and tell me to take off the hat. When I told him I wasn't a student and didn't follow the dress code, he said to either take off the hat, leave, or he'd call the cops. It wasn't the actual day of the trip, just had to show up to get the itinerary and stuff, so... I just said, you know what, F you, I'm out. Idiots. Story 13. No touching the walls. They restored a building with historic value using, among other things, period-appropriate paints. They then opened the planned primary school there and proceeded to try to get children to respect the restoration work. So we had a few years of benches in the hallways being 10 centimeters from the wall, and children were being reprimanded for leaning against the wall before the faculty gave up. Story 14. Shoes are to be worn as the manufacturer intended. I have no clue who was wearing their shoes incorrectly, or how, but this line, verbatim, was repeated to us over and over in the morning announcements, when there were perceived infractions at various points throughout the year. Story 15. The boys in our school were not allowed to have their hair that exceeded the width of a finger. Our principal used to check that by running her fingers through their hair. If their hair was long enough to outgrow her fingers, they were sent to a barber shop opposite to our school for a haircut. Dumb and weird. Story 16. No brand name anything in the lunchroom, so you couldn't bring a small snack pack of, say, Doritos in your lunch. It had to be in a clear plastic sandwich bag. Also, no food or beverage allowed in class. This included bottled water. As an adult, I now know the terrible headaches and migraines I suffered in my teen years were caused by dehydration and not being allowed to drink water during the day unless from the nasty water fountain. Story 17. No playing on the mini golf course. Due to the school having mineral rights on oil land in the mid-70s, our school system had huge amounts of money. One thing they did was get nine concrete animals on the playground for miniature golf. These looked like a lot of fun to play on for kids, and they were concrete, so they were indestructible. They took up a third of the absolute center of the playground. We couldn't touch them, play on them, or get anywhere near them. In P.E., we broke out the putters once in all of grade school. A few years later, they had the high school seniors take them out with sledgehammers. Story 18. No backpacks in the halls. Oh yeah, because carrying all of our books between classes was a great effing idea. Plus, hardly any time between classes to exchange books meant carrying multiple classes' things at once. Looks like this is the norm for quite a few people and school districts. Doesn't make the rule any less stupid, though. But to be fair, it depends on your school. My middle school had eight or so classes a day with three minutes between classes in a large school where classes could be far away from your locker. My high school had four classes and a much smaller building, but my friend's high school was similar to my middle school situation. Story 19. Around 2011 and 2012, my school tried to ban yoga pants because it's easier to see the butts. A ton of guys started showing up in yoga pants to protest. Some because they liked seeing the butts, and some because girls had way too many dress code regulations already. My school got on the news and embarrassed the administrators so much that the rule was reversed. Story 20. My freshman dorm at a religious college had a list of rules that filled a legal-sized sheet of paper. It included being in your room for forced study time every night, keeping your towel straight on the towel rack, and making your bed by 9 a.m. every day, including weekends. So if you wanted to sleep in on Saturday morning, you were supposed to get up, make your bed, and then go back to sleep on top of the bed. 
Story 21. I love telling this one. We had percentage grades, and if you earned 100% in a class for the semester, you would be dinged down to 99% because only God is perfect. As far as I know, this was not an official rule, and I only know of it happening one time, to the girl who eventually became our valedictorian. But that was the reasoning she was given. It was a Catholic girls' high school, and there were a lot of other weird, strictly enforced rules, especially around the uniform. But the only God is perfect rule will always take the cake for me. Story 22. The Belt Rule. If you were wearing a shirt that was cut to be tucked in, you were required to wear a belt with it, if I'm remembering this right. I'm convinced it was an excuse for the principal to line everyone up so he could walk by and look at our butts. Total creepo. My apologies, I'm mixing up two different schools because it was a long time ago and I moved around a lot. In the belt check school, you had to wear a belt if your pants had belt loops. The shirt rule was at a different school, but they didn't have a special assembly for it. They just made kids tuck in a shirt that was cut for that. You know, the kind with the curved edge. Story 23. I went to school in the UK. If you were too warm and wanted to take off your blazer, tough luck. To take off your blazer, everyone in a classroom took it off, so you all looked the same. If someone was opposed to taking it off, you all had to keep it on. Sitting next to the radiator was a pain in the butt. During the summer months, we'd have designated non-blazer days. These were days when the school was probably scared of accidentally killing students by forcing them to wear their blazers. Story 24. Oh, where do I begin? Middle school. For the record, this was all at a private religious school in Asia. Colored socks were banned. Students cannot bring hot sauce for lunch. Girls and boys could not have gym at the same time. If there was an overlap in locker room use, they were next to each other. Boys could not leave the locker room at the same time as the girls. They had to sit in the locker room and wait for all the girls to leave first, lest we ever see the girls in gym shorts. Halloween and any discussions of Halloween, including costumes, are banned. No speaking any language except English. No attempting to check out books above your reading level. You were not allowed to sit alone. Students sitting alone would be assigned friends. Being late for any reason was put on your permanent record. So mine says I was late to home by 10 minutes. You cannot bring refillable water bottles to class, but juice boxes are permitted. No students are permitted on school property after hours unless in a sport. Cardigans are banned. Boys cannot roll up their sleeves even in summer. Girls' socks cannot go over the knees. Skirts need to be four inches above the knee. Colored brawls are not allowed. Male students may not have long hair. Students may not color their hair. One Asian girl with naturally light brown hair was forced to dye hers black. Students bringing outside reading materials into school must first have them approved and stamped by the school librarian as acceptable. Unauthorized materials will be confiscated. Students may not bring their own lunches unless they have an allergy. All food must be purchased from the school cafeteria. School nurse is not permitted to do anything without parental permission. Once, I had to bandage my own leg with paper towels and tape. Nurse cannot give anything ingestible, such as ibuprofen, without a written doctor's note. Students may not call their parents. Cell phones are all turned into homeroom teachers at the start of the day, and calls out must be placed from the school office. Zero tolerance policy towards bullying and defending yourself counts. Oddly enough, skateboarding was allowed, but bikes had to be locked up outside the campus. Students may not play on the field at recess, as that was reserved for sports use only. Instead, we were forced to play on the concrete. Hats were banned. Pokemon was banned. Discussing World of Warcraft was banned, as it was demonic. Choker-style necklaces were not allowed. There was a maximum amount of money that students were allowed to have on their person. Eventually, they banned cash entirely, and all students could only use the school card. Students all had to participate in group prayer, regardless of faith or lack thereof. If you missed the bus, you could not come to school, even if a parent tried to drop you off. The bus was not permitted to go or stop anywhere except for its few drop-off points, even if your house was along the way or very far back. You'd pass your house and have to walk like a half mile back to it. Hoodies were banned because hoodies were for gang members. You could not have your hands in your pockets because you could be concealing a knife. Locks on lockers were not allowed. Bags were subject to random searches by teachers or guards looking for drugs. Public displays of affection were not allowed. 
students may not use the bathroom during class. My friend was one of the few exceptions, as he had a bladder and kidney issue. I think at one point they almost tried to ban tampons and insisted on pads only, but some girl's parents raised hell, and they backed down. The bed was removed, then upon complaints re-implemented, but was to be taught by the school chaplain, likely a virgin. At one point they tried to implement corporal punishment, spanking, canning, etc., and the school board had the votes, as they always did. But thankfully, many teachers refused and threatened to resign, so the board backed down. The school used to be relatively normal, but a bunch of evangelical missionary families moved there and took over the parent administrator board and implemented all those ridiculous rules. Ironically, the only girl permitted to still wear a cardigan was the daughter of the main evangelical mother in charge of the parental board of the school. Why? So she could hide all her self-harm wounds and scars. I bet her life was fun. Anyways, once my parents learned of all this, they took me out, and I was so glad they did. I heard things return to normal about five years later, after all the missionaries left to inflict their wrath on some other unfortunate community. Thankfully, my parents took me out, and my new school was totally awesome. I had blocked a lot of this from my memory, but in hindsight, wow, middle school was prison. High school and college were fairly normal, except... In high school, students were no longer allowed to leave campus, unless they were tired so he could smoke. He was the school's star student. And taking the bus home after club activities required you to register for it a week in advance. Even if they had room on it, you would be kicked off and forced to take a taxi home. In college, you were not permitted to be in an intimate relationship with anyone on your floor. You could not room with anyone who was not in your freshman year dorm building, even in later years. So senior year, I could not room with my best friend because freshman year, he roomed in a different building. Story 25. You were only allowed to enter the school at certain doors. Now hear me out before you say, well, yeah, that makes sense. The student parking was in front of the school, and you walked up a hill to the school. The L-shaped cafeteria was the main entrance point for those who drove. But you could only use one single set of double doors in the cafeteria, which were located at the bend of the L. The ones near what would be the top of the L were off-limits, despite only being about 100 feet away. Right next to those cafeteria doors were the doors to the arena lobby. Yep, not allowed to come in there either. You also weren't allowed to use the auditorium entrance, despite it having a direct connection to the main hallway. What happened was around 1,000 students all trying to get through a single set of double doors over the course of 10 minutes or so. Those that rode the bus could enter any door they wanted at the back of the school where the bus is unloaded. Now, when leaving school, you could literally use any door you wanted. They didn't care at all. Story 26. No bras showing. No flagging. No straps. Girls were supposed to be modest and cover their bras. So the varsity boys got new uniforms. Their old uniforms were given to the JV girls team. Jerseys with open sides and fit for 17 to 18 year old boys were given to 15 to 16 year old girls. If they stood still, you could almost not see their brawls, but while playing, their jerseys swung completely from the opposite side of one cup to the other. Story 27. So, I attended a very strict private religious college. I didn't realize the extent of the rules until I was already a student. Here are just a few of the rules they had. If any of these were broken, you got demerits or kicked out of school, depending on so many different factors. Lights out was 10 p.m. on weekdays, 11 p.m. on weekends. Women and men could not touch each other, like, at all. They had different elevators and staircases, and different dorms. Couples got super weird and would have their faces like an inch apart and just stare into each other's eyes. We called it making eye babies. I saw one couple spit ice cubes back and forth into each other's mouths. But they weren't touching, so totally fine. Women under 23 couldn't leave campus unless they were in groups of three or more. Men could leave campus alone, no matter what age. We were required to go to the on-campus church every Sunday and attend chapel every weekday at 10 a.m., unless we had specific permission to miss. If we had to miss a service for any reason, we were required to make the service up on the weekend. They recorded every church service and had video church every Saturday. There are so many other insane rules at the college, but I'm breaking out in hives just thinking about my time there, and have to stop myself there. Story 1. 
In fifth grade, I had this teacher who was very gruff. Most of us didn't like her because she was such a hard ass. Like military style, with discipline and homework completion. She wasn't mean, but she wasn't nice either. Then I found out my parents were getting a divorce. I showed up to school one day visibly upset, kind of shaky, and had obviously been crying. She basically grunt rasped, decidedly undecided. Hallway, now. I was so not in the mood to be scolded, and I knew I was a mess. I stomped out into the hallway, and she told me she knew what was going on at home, and asked me if I was okay, then listened to me sob and break down about how I felt. She gave me a hug, and asked if I wanted to spend an hour or so in the library since she knew I loved books, and then I could ground myself. It was so unexpectedly kind. I will never forget it. I found out later she was so gruff and short with us because she's been teaching for a long time, and kids are just mean. She had some sort of health condition that left her in pain most of the time, and she had to use a cane, which caused her to hunch a bit. Over the years, all the meanness of the kids made her a little hard and cold, but she really did care about her students. Story 2 In high school, one of my teachers had this duckbill whistle, literally shaped like a duck's bill, and it made a quacking noise. She used it to get the class's attention. One time, I guess we were being extra rowdy, and she blew the ever-loving crap out of it, and the class went stone-dead quiet. She got this shocked look on her face, and then took her hairpin out and dropped it, and the whole class heard it hit the ground, and she got this big grin on her face. And we all just busted out laughing. Story 3 I faked my way through 4th and 5th grade math. I never understood how to do long division, but managed to hide that from the teachers and answer test questions by reverse multiplication. Basically, guess a number and multiply it out and see how close I would get, and keep doing it until I got the answer. My 6th grade math teacher figured out that I was faking, and that I had no idea how to actually divide anything. She had me come in one afternoon to help with cleaning the erasers. All the kids fought for this privilege, so I was thrilled. Sat me down and tutored me until I understood the concept. Bless you, Mrs. Gillespie. Story 4 At my high school, we had an annual week-long science trip, fully paid for by fundraising. Only four people were selected to go each year. My sophomore year, I was chosen. I knew there was no way I was going to be allowed to go. I had never been out of the States, never been on a single vacation, Never been on a plane and never been away from home for more than 24 hours. My parents were incredibly conservative and immediately said no. I had a science teacher who didn't accept the no. Instead of just giving up and selecting someone else, he called and tried to convince my parents. When that didn't work, he came to my house and had dinner with my family to convince my dad that I would be an asset and he would be doing me a disservice by not letting me go. He sat at our table and ate my mom's terrible cooking and talked to my parents for over two hours until he got a, we'll think about it. Then he just kept following up. I had never had someone in my corner like that before who was willing to go to bat for me like that. He wore them down and it was the best week of my teenage life. I'd never seen the ocean, 20 years later, and I can still recall every detail of that trip. It was a major pivot point for me. Story 5 My physics teacher in high school hosted an annual trip to Walt Disney World in Orlando for 15 to 20 kids for over a week. I was one of the better and most interested students in his class. He was an incredible teacher who found examples in physics everywhere. He also used to work for Disney prior to teaching. Since my family was not so well off and I couldn't afford the trip to Walt Disney World, I declined when he asked me if I was going to join. He probed a bit and somehow found the funds to have me join without me even inquiring. I don't know if he pulled the school money or if there was a surplus, but either way, that was one of the best memories from that school. And I still keep in touch with him 15 years later. Story 6 She outed me for pretending to not speak English to my mom. I am Mexican-American, but I am one of those lame border-crossed-me ones who was really a Native American, if we're being honest. At any rate, I ignored my kindergarten teacher so much that she assumed I didn't speak English. I had skipped state testing because I had been to six to seven elementary schools as my mom was skipping out on rent. Middle of first grade, a random teacher realizes I'm reading library books brought from home in the back and not doing my work. 
Not common in a special ed classroom. She called my mom and teacher to a meeting, had me tested as gifted, told my mom that I was pretending to not understand my teachers, and told us that in second grade I was going to be in her room. I was in trouble. For the first and last time in school. Looking back, this is such an impactful memory. She was the only teacher who cared about me at all. When they opened my backpack at the meeting, I had it packed with random books. I had encyclopedias from my grandparents' house, stuff from three school libraries, magazines, etc. Mrs. Judah changed my life because she cared enough to ask the librarian what language I spoke to help me pick more age-appropriate books. I was reading a high school-level novel because the school had just been converted from K to 12. It turns out high school books were appropriate for me. Not age-appropriate, but reading level. I love her, and will never forget the stash of books she kept for me when they converted the library for K-5. to Story 7 The professor I had for my Calculus 100 class in university was awesome. He was a good teacher, and funny and engaging. It was a first-year class with over 100 people in it. I was just a face in a big crowd. I was on campus after hours a couple years after I graduated. They run programs for kids in the evenings and were dropping off my oldest. And I saw him. He stopped, looked at me hard, and said my first and last name. And then said, not a bad student. Not great, but definitely not bad. And kept walking. This was a good six years after I graduated. Absolutely amazed he would have remembered me at all after teaching how many hundreds of students in between. That is just crazy. I had the opposite with my high school band director. When I was a senior in high school, I was walking down the hall with two of my friends who were also in band. At this point, I had been in band with this teacher for almost four years, saw him every day, and had one-on-one -on -one auditions and regular individual performance exams with him. He saw us walking by and greeted us. Hey, John. Hey, Jennifer. Hey. Drawing a complete blank on my name. I didn't take it too personally because he was really nice, but he was one of those people who was really focused on the music, to the exclusion of everything else, and was kind of flaky. I would not be surprised if he identified us all in his head by our instruments and the sound of our playing first, and faces and names a distant second. Story 8. Told me I was smart and could succeed. I had spent the past couple of years at a private school, trying so hard to prove myself. Despite doing well academically, I didn't quite fit their cookie-cutter mold, so I was looked down on by other students and administration. When I told the guidance counselor that I wanted to be pre-med and go to medical school after college, she pretty much told me to lower my expectations because I would not succeed. At the end of my college math class my senior year of high school, I ended up in my professor's office to look at what I had missed on my final. He told me that I had done well, and that I could get my PhD in math if I wanted. That was not what I wanted to do. But when I told him I wanted to be pre-med, he looked at me and said, You're going to do well in that. I know you'll succeed. Six years later, and I'm halfway through my second year of medical school, and his words still ring in my mind. Story 9 had the police come to the school because he had reason to believe I was smoking cigarettes and using drugs in 7th grade. No, both of my parents smoked in the house. I didn't even know I smelled like cigarettes until the police told me why they were searching my backpack, desk, and locker. Story 10 When I was in 7th grade, there was a teacher at my school that was essentially a love child of Santa and an elf. Dude was 5 foot 2, over 300 pounds, and had a beard that would put Gimli to shame. My first ever conversation with this man ended with him saying, Now you go get yourself something to eat, big man. It caught me so off guard, I didn't even realize what he had said until after I walked away. Story 11 My RE teacher tried to keep me behind for no reason. I'm a complete goody two-shoes, and he gave me my first ever detention for asking my friend about what textbook page we were reading after coming to class late following an appointment. The guy tried to make me pick bits of paper and rubber bands off the floor as he watched me do it. I walked out, with zero consequences. Story 12. Not me, but my brother. He had one of those haircuts that was popular in the mid-90s, where you have a long fringe, maybe five inches, but skinhead the rest. 
He was a skateboarder. Anyway, the woodshop teacher decided that the haircut was a health and safety hazard and swiftly cut his hair in front of the entire class while berating him and giving him a lecture on kids today, etc, etc. My brother was 12 and came home from school crying. My father was less than pleased and apparently went up to the school and made a right kerfuffle, as he should. My mother was very embarrassed by it all. I'll never forget. Story 13. When I was in third grade, the teacher of my gifted program class, extra class we were pulled from mainstream to do a few hours a week, started berating me over raising my hand too quickly to answer questions, saying I needed to think longer and give others the chance to answer. She went on and on about how I had an attitude. I got upset, and she made me stand in front of the class when I started to cry. I know you're crying, and I don't care. It was my birthday, too. It was a class of about eight students. One guy told me in high school that that day was one of his clearest memories from elementary school. One of my most vivid memories of high school is an old English teacher mocking a fellow student's nervous stammer as she did her presentation in front of the class. When the student started crying, that teacher mocked her crying, then failed her for not completing the presentation because she was crying. We used to joke that we hoped that an old dried up piece of crap like her would drop dead in front of the class. I'm so sorry that happened to you, and I hope your subsequent birthdays have rocked. Story 14. Oh boy. Grade 3, I said, oh crap, when I got tagged out, rounding second during a game of soccer baseball. Canadian term for kickball. A little girl covering the base screamed, teacher, negotiation fair said the C word. So I got put in detention and yelled at for the rest of the day until I finally snapped on my teacher at the end of the day and said, Listen, teacher, I don't get it at all. All I said was all crap when she caught the ball, and I didn't even know that that was a swear word. The teacher replied, Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought you said the other C word. I said, What is the other C word? She said, Ask your mother. At the end of the day, I got into the van and told my mom what happened. She broke out laughing her ass off and explained to me when I asked that the word the teacher thought I had said was I went to school the next day and said it to all my friends. Hey, guys, guess what word I just learned? Story 15. Senior year of high school. I was on the wrestling team and I had cut about 30 pounds that year from 170 down to 140. I happened to have the same math teacher three years in a row. So we really got to know each other. First name basis and all that. She knew how much weight I cut for the season. I told her, and it was obvious just from my face. I wasn't fat before my cut either. I had a six pack. She had a strict no eating in class policy. That'll be important in a minute. The day after the wrestling season ends, I walk into math class and sit down. She walks over to my desk and puts a whole apple pie right in front of me. She knew it was my favorite handed me a fork, and she said she'll ignore the no-eating rule for one day. I finished that whole pie in maybe 30 minutes. Linda, I will never forget that. You absolutely made my day. Story 16. I have always loved learning and loved going to school. I was a good kid and never really got into trouble. One year, my parents got called in for a parent-teacher conference. One by one, each of my teachers told my parents that I acted out during class, was a distraction, etc. This came as a surprise to my parents, as I had never gotten in trouble, and my grades were always good. Finally, the conversation got to my history teacher and my science teacher. They were speechless. My history teacher told my parents that he wished he had a classroom full of students with a passion for learning like me, and that if the other teachers put in as much effort into teaching as I did into learning, then there would not be an issue. My science teacher agreed and apologized for wasting my parents' time. The rest of the school year was interesting. I could tell there was tension between certain groups of my teachers. My history teacher would later become the principal of that school, and I could not think of anyone more deserving of that role. Story 17. Freshman English teacher in college. He had a last name with two capital letters in it, so something like McConnor. On the top of one of my first papers, I wrote McConnor with two lowercase c's, and he told me that I spelt his name incorrectly. 
Now, obviously, this confused me because the spelling was indeed correct, and it took a few minutes of back-and-forth confusion before he told me what I did wrong. Like a typical 18-year-old, I just kind of shrugged it off, like, eh, who cares? His response was essentially, if you don't care enough about your writing to get it correct, why the hell should somebody else care enough to read it? The response hit pretty close to home. Not initially, of course, because I was an 18-year-old, but now, 15 years later, I still think about it from time to time, and it does force me to put more of an effort into many of the things that I do. Story 18 My computer science teacher would belittle me in front of the other students and even asked me why I showed up for class. I hated his class and slowly just stopped doing the work and failed the class because he made me believe I was dumb and incapable. I'm currently working in an MSCS at a top 10 CS school and have plans to apply for PhD programs in CS next year. Story 19. Fifth grade. Teacher was shaking with anger because I put my math problems horizontally instead of vertically, or something really stupid like that. She snapped at me for not being able to follow simple directions and humiliated me. When she went to look at the paper of the boy next to me, he said, I did it the same way. She smiled fondly and said, Oh, Robert, as if she was amused. Story 20. I once got expelled for smoking at school when at the time I never even smoked it. I was 13 and started crying, saying that I didn't smoke any Since I was crying, my eyes got red and then the teacher and principal said, Just look at how red your eyes are. You're ripped out of your mind. It got me kicked off our championship basketball team and everything. I will never forgive those two for what they did to me and the stress they caused my single mother. Story 21 Wasn't so much what she did to or for me, as something she did with the entire class. 8th grade language arts class. She was a very cool person, never looked at you with judgmental eyes, treated everyone the same and with respect and honesty, like we were equals to her. Anyways, the one thing that sticks out more than any other was the very first day of school. She made us all listen to a song didn't tell us why. Seemed kind of pointless and lame at the time. Last day of school, we played the same song. Can't even describe how I felt. The school years always seemed to drag on and on. Could never wait for summer. But when she played the song at the end of the year, it kind of brought the whole year together and made it seem like you had just walked in the door for the first time. For the life of me, I wish I could remember what that song was. Story 22 had a teacher in first grade who was hella superstitious and stuff. One time, she told us if we slept with our feet out from under the blankets, someone would break into our house, cut off our feet, and then leave them on our front porch inside our shoes. It wasn't even near Halloween or anything. She was just saying it like it was actual advice. Scared the crap out of little kid me. Story 23 Guy sitting beside me had his head resting on his stacked fists on the desk, wide awake and paying attention. Teacher was walking up and down aisles, came up behind him and smacked him across the back of the head with the spine of a rather large business studies book while screeching, pay attention. I will never forget the hollow thud sound. Poor Effer was dazed for hours after. Story 24. My sixth grade teacher made us act out some Greek gods and helpers since we were doing mythology. A girl in my class decided to act out as Hermes. After she was done acting out as the character, the teacher looked her dead in the eye and said, That was gay. Why didn't you act out as a Greek goddess? The girl left the class crying. 